Hello, hello, hello. Long time. I know it's been a long time, um, but here we are. I'm sorry about that, but this is what it is. Um, again, um, if I can get the time to make more video, I absolutely will. Um, thanks to all the love for staying there, um, sticking with me, waiting for the video. I get a lot of messages. I try to respond to those each one and every single message that I get. I read all the comments. Um, and so I do appreciate the love that I see on the channel. People tell me at all, they like the content. The channel is underrated. I wish, appreciate that, but I would like also for it to grow. So let's see what we can do together to make it grow. But um, here we are. So today we're going to be looking at creating a container the hard way. And just to jog your memory from the last video, um, we saw that um, when we talk about what is a, what is Docker, we said it's an application which abstract the creation of containerized processes. And then we explain what a container is. And it says a container runs one or more processes in isolation, right? And it forces um, limitation on CPU usage, you know, access to resources and how much of it you can use and um, like memory. Okay. Um, so given that to do a proper container, right? To create a container that really restrict and impose limitation on processes, then we'll need to be able to do things like be able to define and enforce CPU and other resource um, limitation. We're going to ignore that today. And because like I said, doing a container is pretty involved, but we'll still get an idea of part of it that goes into creating a container. We can do this sort of isolation of process at least, okay, without getting into the restriction of things. So with that said, um, let's jump into what we're going to be talking about today, something called change root. And it's a Unix command. It's a command that's available in a Unix-like system. Now, before we jump into change root, please do me a favor. With all the love I'm getting and everything, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I do upload videos. You definitely don't want to miss it if you're liking the content. Spread the word. Let everyone know. Like, leave comments and so on. This is how the video is going to get um, notification by the YouTube algorithm so it can be shown to others. So I really appreciate it. You taking the time to do that. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much. And see if you can help me spread the word on the content that you like so much. Okay. So let's continue with change root. So what is change root? So if you haven't used a Unix like system, this is going to be pretty weird for you. And even if you use it, change root might still um, kind of be a little bit trippy, trippy. So change root, like I said, change root is a command in Linux, but it's really in Unix like systems, right? And what does change root do? Change root really use changes the root directory. Like I said, in Unix, or Unix like system, we have this idea of a root directory, which is represented by slash. And under that directory slash is all the other directory, all the other directories are mounted under that. This is different from like Windows, for example, where you have a C directory, D, E, and just different, different directory. There's no idea of a central directory outside of C. It's either you're in C, you're in D, you're in E, you're in the letter directory, under which you can create more directory. But if you imagine that a window should unify that whole hierarchy on the like slash, then what you have is like slash C and you get to the C directory, slash D, you get to the D directory, but slash itself would be a directory. And so and we would call that the root directory. So this is what it is in Unix land. And so the change root, C-H-R-O-T um, command does this, it changes what your root directory so basically you can think of it by changing what root directory is it changes the content of that root directory and we're going to see how this is important for what we want to do when we want to talk about creating containerized processes now here's a note the change root command can only be run by the root user um, so if you have a non-root account you will not be able to use change root okay it makes sense like if you're going to be affecting the system in such a way where you have processes being created and i'm saying it needs to be able to be done by a user with certain privileges now docker is i'm just showing you again how to create a container from the hard way i'm not showing you how docker works that's a slow slightly different thing there's actually a youtube video where i can remember the young lady name who went through how to write or implement docker in go but we're not doing that so let's talk about how change would work. 
So let's say this is my current um, root directory, the contents of it. So what I use is a command and I said, just show me the first level of directories. The reason why you're seeing like an arrow is because some of those first level directory like bin is actually a symbolic link that's pointing to user bin. And so what it means is it's actually pointing to the slash user slash bin directory. And so um, this is a symbolic link to user bin, whereas bin is within this directory user here. And same thing with sbin is a symbolic link to the directory user sbin, where sbin is also within here. And you could sort of parse out the same thing with this lib directory, right? But that doesn't matter. What we can see is that my current slash or root directory has about 21 directories or thereabout, okay? All right, so that's what my current system, my system looks like before I run change root. Let's say within my root directory, which is this guy, my home directory as the root user, I decide to create a new directory. I'm gonna call it very creatively new root. And within it, I'm going to create a directory structure. And if you notice within this directory, this directory that I want to be my new root, I have a bin directory, I have a lib directory and some subdirectory with some files and it doesn't matter how I populate it yet. I mean, of course I copied it, but we'll figure out what we need to copy. And notice for my user bin, you remember I told you that oh, user bin, because bin actually points to user bin. That's where the commands really are. And so user bin and also within user has bin. Um, definitely within user bin, I have some command. And again, I only have these two commands, bash and ls. So I can create, because I'm creating this new root, I can decide which set of commands I want and what are the supporting libraries. If you don't know what libraries are, just think of them as additional files um, that your command might need or your application might need because it depends on it, but it doesn't include it. Now, this is very different from Go. So if you took my Go class, I explained about statically linked and dynamically linked. So these are dynamically linked directly, the SO, shared objects. Okay. So now I've prepared my new root directory. Now, before moving on, like I said, bin points to symbolic, um, this user bin, but you can see I have the same thing, a bin directory in my new root. I have one for user and the library directories, of course. So let's say I run the change root command, and this is how simple this command is. It's ch root, and then the path to the, that's supposed to be your new root. Once you execute this command, this is what happens. Your system now changes so that the slash directory no longer contain these 20 odd directories, but rather the content of this new root, because that's what you're saying. You want to change the root to this. So it means that the content of this becomes the content of root, okay? Of the new root file system. And so as you can see, it's essentially like we have just navigated in such a way so that now we're looking or just restricted to seeing the files within our new root. And that's exactly what it is. So hopefully without, again, this is a little bit trippy probably for some of you, but even if you can put that aside for a minute, you can probably see how the container thing work when we go into a container where we're restricted and only seeing certain set of processes. Because now, if I were to be able to change into this new root and just run ls or bash, well, then those would be my only two process if somehow I could make them keep just running, right? And those are the only things that I um, could run. They, there's no access to anything else. And I'm gonna prove this to you in a bit. So we're gonna jump to the command line and take a look at this in details. So let's do it. Okay, so here I am on my command line, right? And what I'll do is, you can see that we have a few directories that um, for work we have been doing, and today we're working on the hard way of doing things. So let's go there, and I don't have anything there. So what I wanna start with now, I'm on my Mac right now, okay? Um, so if I do uname minus N, for example, um, well, uname minus A, and you can see this is Darwin. So this is actually my uh, Mac that I'm on. Okay, so um, let's clean up. And so what I wanna do is start by writing a Go application. Now, why a Go application? I'm gonna show you why, because this is gonna make understanding change with a little bit easier, I think, if I can start showing you with a application that is statically linked. And I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so let's just trust me and just let's start writing a Go application. So I'll do that by bringing up Visual Studio Code. 
and I'll create a directory and I'll call it just app very creatively. And then I'll put my go.mod file in here. So this is going to be module app. And so that's awesome. And then I'll create my main.go and package main. And then uh, main. And then function main, of course. And let's just say I want to do something like FMT um, print f print f and I want to say hello world from and I want to put um, the name of the container oh maybe I want to put hello world from host you know name of the container at whatever time okay <laughs> just being crazy right now so I want to put the host name and I want to put the time right which is going to be now whatever this is run so how do i get that sort of thing well um pretty simply well we know that in go you can get the time by saying well, let's do a host name first well time is easy so now is equals to time that now right that's it and then for the host name we can do host name uh comma and i don't care about the error message and we'll get an error back from OS, that host name, this, there we go. And as you can see, it returns, you know, the host name and an error. So I'm the, I don't expect this to give us an error. So um, I don't know why this is contained. Um, so not F, printf, uh, come on, printf, yep, there we go. All right, so there's my Go application and so let's see there's the go build app it's supposed to go be in my app directory i do go build let's clean up run it and no surprise we should get um the host name and we should get the time okay all right sweet but the thing with go is we build statically linked application which means when we build our application it has all the dependencies built into the application it has no it has everything it needs is wrapped up in the application. It has no external dependencies. Unlike some other application, like you saw when I, if I were to do LS or something, it has dependencies on those shared objects, right? What it means is your Go application tend to be a little bit larger in size than an application, let's say I wrote this in C or Java or something, it would be tend to be a little bit smaller because they are dynamically linked and therefore would require that the OS have that library. Because Go application is not a good link, it makes it very easy for us to be able to demonstrate and play with something like change root. So now, I'm not root on this system. You're probably not gonna be able to run root on the system that you're on. And if you're on Windows, well, you wouldn't be able to run change root at all. So even if you, um, you're the admin on that system. So um, unless you're using um, Linux or system for Windows or something like that, but we all install, hopefully by now, since we're working with Docker, we install Docker for desktop in the very first video of this series. And so even if you're on Windows, you should have Docker running. And if you have Docker running, well, we know how we can run a container. So let's do that. So we do Docker run. I'm doing minus IT for interactive because I want to be able to have a prompt within that container. And I'm going to do minus RM so that it removes this container after I exit it, you know, clean up. So I don't have a number of containers that has been stopped and I got to go back and clean them up later. And then I'm going to use the Ubuntu distribution, but feel free to use CentOS or something else. But um, if you stick with Ubuntu and what I'm doing, if it works for me, it should work for you. Again, I'm using Docker, so this should work regardless of whether you're on Windows, Mac, Linux, um, or whatever, so long you have Docker there. And so I do Ubuntu, and then I want to run the Bash program or shell. Bash happens to be a shell, but it could be any program, but I want to use Bash because, again, I want to be to get a prompt within this container. So here I am in this container now. And I know this because if I do like df minus h, for example, I can see what the file system look like here within this. And this is a Unix system. You know, if I do uname minus a like before, you can see that it says Linux and the kernel version. Hopefully I've convinced you ever since that how I actually in a Linux environment. So how can we use change root here? Well, 
I'll do the same thing. So notice here, I have LS and those are the list of those directories I showed you before. Now, I want to use a tree command and it's not installed in this environment. So I can do apps and this is Ubuntu. And I could do update to get the latest list of all available um, applications or packages that I can install. And then I can do app and I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about upgrade. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this environment just now. So I'm do app install and I wanna do yes, don't prompt me. And I wanna do tree command. And I also wanna be able to um, later on use Vim. So I'm gonna say I want Vim. Now if you don't know Vim or something, don't worry about that. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is very simple. You can um, do it without Vim. And so, okay, so now I have that installed. Let me clean up my screen. And now if I type tree and I run it like this, you can see at least from where I am right now, which is I am in the root of the file system in that root directory. You can see there are like 4,100 directories and 16,000 files. Now what I can do is run root like this and I can say, now look, tree command, and I can say minus level and just show me um, the stuff at level, the first level. And so you can see that's that. Or I can actually specify which directory I want this command to run in. And now you can see the exact same output that I showed you in the slides. Okay, so if I type CD and just enter, that puts me in the home directory of the root user. Notice when I do PWD, now I'm in that slash root directory instead of just slash directory. And of course, if I write, run the three command again, um, I can see that there's zero directories and zero files here. Uh, it's a little bit of a lie that there's zero files here. It's actually, there's some hidden files here. Um, and so, you know, bash RC and bash profile, but they're hidden. So it doesn't count those hidden files by default. So we'll stick with that, that there's zero files in zero directories. All right, so let's create that directory for our new root. So I'm gonna, again, very creatively create a directory called new root, and I'll put it here. And what I'll do is I'll also create a directory. Uh, let's say, you know what? Let me um, write some code here. So I'm gonna do MK app. So this is gonna be my app directory. And so now I have two directory. I have new root and I have app. All right, so in my app directory, here we go, there it is. And I want to be able to run that program that for my Go, if my Go program. So there are a couple of ways I can do. I can build a program as a Go program, as a Linux program on my um, Mac and then copy it into this um, container. That's one option that I have, and that's fairly easy to do. Um, the other thing I can do is install the Go binaries, um, the Go um, tool chain, and then just build my application here. Now, since we already have it um, running here on my Mac, well, I just say, let's just install, um, let's just build it and copy it over. So I'm back in my directory. And so I can say, um, go OS equals uh, Linux. And then I should be able to say, go build. And that should build it. And now we have a binary for, for Mac, uh, for, for Linux. And I can test it, check, got, confirm this by typing file command on it. And you can see it says, ELF executable. And the fact that ELF executable is statically linked, you remember I mentioned this, does not dynamically linked, doesn't depend on anything else. And ELF means for Linux versus if I had built it for Mac, it would say Darwin. Okay, so how do I get it now into this container? So there's my container ID, I'll copy it. And what I will type from my Mac, or if you're in whatever, you type Docker CP, and if you type Docker CP, what you can see is you can copy something from a container, colon the source to your local system, or you can type from your local system to the container. So that's what we wanna do. I wanna copy this app from my local system into this container, there's a container ID, and I wanna put it inside, let's say, slash root directory. And I think, um, oh, what do I do? We just copy it directly to new root, you know? Yep, there we go. And so if I go back here, I actually don't need this app directory because I'm not going to even build this application anymore within thing. I would have, I was going to install Go and just rebuild the application there, but that saves us some time since we um, don't have to do that, right? But you can do go that path if you like. And so now if we check new root, there is our application and we can run it, right? We can see it to this directory and just do 
this and there we go you can see it says hello world from host and this is the id or the host name for this host which we get from right here and then at whatever time okay so that seems to work now i said that though by using a statically linked application it makes it super easy for me to demonstrate um change root so let me go back up one directory let me clean up a bit and i'll do the same thing here we don't need two shells open um, anymore and so no tricks up my sleeve i still have what i had before which is just new root in this one um, file this application it's an executable application so using the change root command i can say i want to change root and again it's very easy there's some options you can pass but for the most part we're going to ignore all the options you know say the new root directory and notice the command is optional but we're going to specify what command we should run because otherwise it's going to try to run a shell and we don't have a shell so let's just try that and see if i do change root and i say my new root is new root which is this directory like this you can see it tried to run slash bin slash um, sh and mind you this slash bin slash sh it's trying to run that's relative to this new root and so what we can do honestly is we can just put create a directory slash bin within new root and then make our application sh call it sh and we'd run it but we're not going to do that instead we'll say which application we want to run and the application we want to run is slash app keep in mind that once we change root this become our new root so relative to this new root we want to run the app application the app process right or app application right it's not process yet but an app application i know i shouldn't call this app but here we go and notice when i do that guess what it actually went into that change our root and run that because that's the only way it would have been able to run it as slash app is by us successfully doing change root if it didn't do a slash um, successfully changed our root we could not have run this as slash app right because this is not clearly not in um, slash or application is clearly not in in slash app it's really within the sub directory here all right so maybe you're not convinced all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now copy in some files to make sure that we can demonstrate that or we can change into root and stay there. So the first thing we should probably do is copy in a shell because just like how we got into Docker by using a shell, which is a process that keep running until you exit it, that is exactly what we want. We want a process that we can go in to in our new change root. So let's get a shell. Um, so how do we get a shell application copy? Well, we can use a copy command, of course, and there are a number of things or options with the copy command that's going to help us in terms of preserving the same permission and creating the same directory structure so we don't have to recreate the same directory structure. And here is that um, option. It's um, the minus minus parent and it says use the full source file name under the destination. Use the full you see full source file name under the destination and we'll see why that makes sense for us and we'll use variables to explain what we're doing all right so let's just do it and see what happens so if we want to copy ls command well let's do it. if when we say ls where is the ls command like it's in our path obviously but we can use the which command to say which ls which is going to tell us that ls is in this path so if we want to copy something we have to give the full path of it right so we can do copy and then we can say i want you to run the which command and of course what's going to happen is before cp can be run it's going to run this subshell and figure out what the path is for ls and put it there and then we want to say copy this to new um, to new root like that and so if we do that um ah well see it's gonna do it so there is ls in the new root directory but i don't want ls to be there right we want it to be in the bin directory we want it to be in slash user bin which is the same path from which it came right that's the whole thing about using parent so if we do this instead cp and we do minus v for borrows tell us what you're doing then minus parents and we run it again now as you can see it says oh i am going to make this directory user i'll make the directory bin and then now i'm going to copy the ls command to it and so now 
when we do tree on this directory, what we see is ls is inside of bin, bin is inside a user, and then user is inside a new root. So this gives us a way to mirror or easily create our new root structure that mirrors the um, same structure in the file system that we're in. Of course, limited in to by limited it to the things that we want. So we want the ls command. Now remember what I said. The ls command requires some um, supporting files, some shared object. And we could prove this by doing ch root. And if we say new root, and then we try to run the ls command. Now remember, ls is within our new root, is inside of slash user slash bin slash. And then it's ls, that's the command. And if we try to run this, you can see it says no such file or directory. Well, this command change root could be a little bit more um, clear about what is going wrong, but really it's not so much that it can find user bin ls, it's really that it cannot find the dependencies, those SO shared object that the ls command needs. And so what we can do then is use yet another Linux command to tell us which set of libraries does any command use? So we can say um, LDD, which is for the link loader, and um, we can say for the ls command, uh, so for the ls command, so we have to give the path to the command, ls command, which dependence, what is its dependencies? And so if you look, you can see dependent this library, shared object, all these are dependencies. The good thing is some of these libraries, the one that don't have a, so this is a symbolic link, this library actually point to this guy, all right? Um, we can see this doesn't point to anything else. The arrow says points to, right? Or like a symbolic link. This doesn't point to anything, which means that it actually provided inside of the kernel. So we need not worry about it. But all the ones that are in a directory like this, we need those to be copied to the exact same path within our um, new root. So we have a way to do this, right? If we can just pick out all the files that have a, you know, slash that's in a directory, then we can just copy it. So the way we can do this is by running this command and piping it to something like grep. Grep is a very nice little program that allows you to grep out or take out pieces, look for pieces of text, and you can do look for literal text or regular expressions. Now we haven't covered regular expression because we haven't talked about system administration or any of that sort of thing, so you just have to trust me. And so if I want to find anything that has Linux in X, for example, Linux in the text, I can do this and you can see it pull out only and it shows me only the line that I have Linux. Just so happened everything there had Linux. Um, but I can also do the same thing and say I just want to look for things that have a slash. And so now notice how it ignore this very first one, this VDSO, because that does not have a slash. It only output in lines that have slash. Now I can do better than that. What I really want is I want to ignore everything that comes before. I only want things that start from the slash until we get to um, the end here without including the space. So again, this is regular expression. If you don't know it, don't worry. So what I'm saying is things that start with a slash, I want you to output that. Well, I want you to search right now for things that start with a slash and followed by any other character that's not a space. And I want more than one of it. Again, if you don't understand regular expression, you know, let me know if you want to see me do something like that. And in the um, just stuff video, I can do one on like regular expressions. And if I run this, now you can see that it's highlighting what it has found um, in red, which is good. It means that oh, since it's found these things, um, these paths, that's exactly what we want. But how do we get it to only output those things? We use a minus O option. And when we do this, uh, bam, we just tell grep only output the things that you found. And so this now allows, this is super sweet, right? This allows us now to get the file um, names with the full path. But remember, we need to copy this into our new root. So we already know how to copy this and mirror the same path by using the minus minus parent option for the copy command. Now here's the thing. In your shell, you have a few things. It's almost like a little programming language. You have if, you have else, you have for, right? And so for is really cool. You can do for i in and you can give it a set of um, values. So you can say for i in, let's say a, b, c, d, and then you could do do and you say then 
And then now is where you put your commands, right? You can put command one, semicolon, command two, semicolon, and then da 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 da, all your commands, and then you say done. And that's the end of it, right? So for us, we're gonna do our command is simply gonna be echo. I wanna say, I am working on dollar sign I, right? And so what is I? Well, I is gonna take um, each one of these values. So I is gonna be A first, then B, then C, then D, all right? And if I run like this, ah, then do, sorry, then is for if. So I just need to put do. So um, do, and oh man, it, it, um, it treats it like one string, right? Uh, one value. So if I do this, this, and then I do this, now you see that how it actually treats it as individual value. And so it went through the loop and it says I is forces A, then B, then C, then D. And now I have multiple um, output. So that means that how we can substitute um, the output that we get from this LD into our place here for A, B, C, and D. And now we're able to iterate through those set of values. So let's do that. But we know how to put, so if we try to put this command directly, directly like this, it wouldn't work, right? Okay. If we try to do that, it wouldn't work. It's just iterate through each one of them. And plus there's some character there, the pipe that it's confused about. So it doesn't want to do it. So instead, what we have to do is enclose this into a subshell. And we know how to run things in a subshell already. We put a dollar sign and then um, parentheses, right? Another way to run a subshell is by doing back tick. That also work. But I think this is a little bit clearer. So let's clear up our screen. It's running. Okay, now you can type this a lot clearer within a shell script. And so let's do that. Um, this doesn't look too good on the command line. So let's create a shell script. Let's let's call it, let's do touch, make new root, make root or something like that, that sh. I'll change the permission on it to, you know, um, be executable if I want. And then remember why I said I wanted to install Vim? So I can do that. So, okay, so let's paste our command here. So I did minus I, if you don't know how to use VI, um, then um, don't, I use minus I. If you don't know how to use VI, use nano. And nano is a simple editor. I can do that and it's not installed. So I can do apt install minus Y nano. And um, this is another thing that you can use is nano. And now you can see I can edit and I don't have to do any fancy command. I can just start typing and then I can say for I in there, da, da, da. And so this is the way I usually format my, um, my for loop. It's like this. I put each command on a new line by itself. And then I put the done like this, right? And so you could put multiple commands after this. And so copying, I can say copying this. What's the first thing we want to do? Each library that we need for this command ls, we have to copy it. So we have to do copy minus v minus minus parents. And then we have to say dot sign i for that file because we already figure out what the file is, right? We have the list of file and we're going through each one of them. So dot sign i represent each file. And so we want to copy that to new root. That's all we need to do. And um, what we can do is since we um, know that we might be able to copy multiple commands. What we can do is instead of using hard coding, the fact that we're using ls here, right? And notice how we, we have to put in the path. We could once again say that our, what we're using is just um, which of whatever the command is that we pass in. So let's pass in the command as a variable. So that's going to be, let's say, call it command, right? Some variable, cmd. And now we can run that as a sub command. So we do which command, which is, this is a variable with the command. And then once we get the path for that command, we'll pass it to LD. LD is gonna figure out all the libraries, which we're going to strip out from the output of LD. And for each library, we'll copy it to new order, 
to new root in the correct way. Now, if we have a variable with the command we want to copy, we should also just copy that command too. So we should do cp minus v minus minus parents dollar sign c and d and copy that to new root. So this is gonna take care of copying um, the command also for us. Now, what is CMD? CMD is equals to something that we're gonna pass in from outside, which is gonna be the first parameter to our script here. And so again, if you don't know anything about shell scripting, don't worry, just follow blindly what I'm doing. What we need to do is to pass it to which, this, and then this, okay? That's what we need to do. Okay, I'll leave it up to you if you want to you know, remove this line or not. And again, if you don't know VI, use nano. I just show you how to use nano. So let's clean up and we can actually remove our new root. I should probably, I don't need the Go application anymore. <laughs> remove the new root. I no longer have it. The only thing I have is my script. I'm gonna make a directory called new root. And let's rerun our script, sh make root. I want the ls command. There we go. Let me clean up. Let me do tree command. And there we go. So our new root directory have the lib, lib64, and ls. And we have this nice little Andy script that can take care of things for us. But that's an ls command. What we said was we wanted a shell. So bash. And if I run tree command again, notice that we have the bash command in the correct location. And if there were any other dependencies that we didn't have before, well, it's just gonna add to the list. Okay, so time is a waste, anyway. let's keep moving. So while I'm at it, I might as well just put in a few more things. So I'm actually gonna put in Vim, which is a pretty complex program. Look how many dependencies Vim has. So that's gonna go in there. And let's clear up my screen and let's do three again. And so we can see that we have Vim the command and we have a bunch more dependencies. Um, I'm gonna just go crazy and just add in some more things like df. I'm gonna also to call mv and I think cp maybe itself, right? And so clean up and we do tree and now you can see we have quite a few commands there. And so this is gonna be our new root. All right, so let's see if this actually works. So again, change root. I want new root to be my new root and I'll just try and enter and it failed on slash bin slash sh. But we know that though we don't have a slash bin, what we have instead is, you know, slash user bin and we're gonna use bash instead. So we want slash because that's gonna be where our new root is gonna be stored and reference from. So it's gonna be slash user slash bin slash bash. And we do that. And now notice how we have bash five and we're inside of our new root. How do we know this? Well, if we do ls, we can see we only have lib64 and user, which are the three directories that we see here as the top level directories. And if we do ls of our user directory, we see bin, and if we do bin, we see just the commands that we have copied in. There's nothing else. We cannot run any other command. We could not run like the dd command, for example, because it does not exist in this environment. So we have now created or switch into a jail because you've isolated um, the user to just this environment where they can only run these set of commands. So it's almost like they're in a jail, right? Um, so I put the df command within here, right? And so if I type df, it fails. And that's because DF needs actually a configuration file. Within my container, if I do ls slash etc, I have all these files. And there's one file that allows the DF command to work, which is why it did not work when I was inside my change root, even though I had a DF command. If you remember, I did um, ch root, new root, and then slash user bin slash bash, right? That gets us into our environment. If I type df, this command did not work. And that is because it's expecting a directory called etc with a file called mtab or the monk tab. And so I don't have anything in here to actually create that file or make a directory because I don't have make directory. So let's do that. Let's make a directory called etsy. And so I'll put it inside my new root. And instead of trying to copy this mtab file, 
I'll just write one, okay? So basically the content of that file, if let's do head slash etc m tab, and so you can see there's a whole bunch of confusing thing in there, but basically is the device, where it's gonna be mounted, what type of it, the format of it or the file system, and then some um, parameters or how to use that thing, whether it's read only or whatever, and then the zero zero need not um, discuss it, but it could be like zero one or whatever. But again, we need not discuss it. So I'm not going to copy this. Instead, I'm going to make something like that. And so what I'll do is I say echo. I'll say overlay, and we want the slash root to be the file system that's overlay file system type. And then I'm just going to say defaults. And I will say zero space zero. That's what I'm going to put in there. And I'm going to redirect this to our new root Etsy, and I'll call it M tab. There we go, right? So now if I do tree, you're going to see that we have this Etsy directory, this file M tab. All right. So let's go back in now to our change root, and we want to do a new root, and of course you want to do user bin slash bash. That's a shell we want, and we know in our new root. And if you remember the last time when I typed df, it did not work, but now when I type df, it works. And that's because it has this Etsy file. And notice, I only have one entry as opposed to like the five or six that I get from my Linux um, when I was in that container. And so this tells you that df work. It's also further shows you how you can keep refining and just restricting what you put in this jail, this root for this user, this new root, and then you can set it up change to it and then give the user access to it and then now they're in within this limited environment so hopefully this has shown you now both how to use change root but how with change root and many other things many other things because we haven't done anything to restrict as you can see um here if i do df minus h you can see that oh it says within this environment we have you know available 29 gigs maybe you might want to set up a jail for the user and they don't have access to the 29 gigs of storage that's actually available in the system so you might want to do something around how many bytes they can write out and in terms of cpu if they can run a program like you know i can write cp or if i have access since this is bash i could do a while loop you know do something that's just consume a lot of resources here and so um, you might not want to you might want to limit the user in terms of a CPU to consume within this jail. And so you can use C group for that. But we're not talking about that. I just wanted to show you a little bit. And you can see how much work we had to do just to get this, uh, get all these files sort of set up. It wasn't too much. It wasn't too crazy. But that only allows us to have this environment with the set of files we want. From here, we can keep building on it with the security and other things and limitation of resources. So that's it i hope this was illustrative i hope it helped you understand a little bit better the magic behind containers and what's going on there um i i don't know how much more um you can get into without actually trying to recreate the whole thing and that's not what we're doing we're just trying to understand a little bit how what docker is how it might work up behind the scene or part of it and then how to use it that's really what we want to get to is the usage not so much to recreate docker that's not what this is about right but i wanted to demystify it a little bit so in the next video we'll continue now and i'll show you how to build images that you use to define a container all right that's it for this video um if you haven't subscribed yet hopefully you like what you see and you subscribe remember that oh, if you like what you see and you enjoy the content maybe someone else will like it too so not only share the word but definitely comment and thumbs up the video this is what help the youtube algorithm recognize it sees it and promote it okay so definitely be thumbsing up the video and um commenting and of course please subscribe too that helps with the channel growing um if you'd like to support the channel financially well, of course, here are some, a few ways you can do that through PayPal, through digital currency, or through my Patreon page. All that is available if you can support it, okay? Otherwise, to that, enjoy the content, spread the word, and see you in the next video. Stay safe, take care, bye.